Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, this video, I'm going to be starting to go through the June 2023 Mechanics M1 paper from the International A level at Excel. And I'm going to go through each question, um, you know, one question at a time in the separate videos so I can save the questions according to topic as well as according to the paper. So I have two playlists, one with the paper, one with the topic that the particular question is from. And again, I reiterate that I'm not going to just be reading through the mark scheme. I'm going to be explaining and trying to make people understand, maybe showing different methods, going through common mistakes where people make lose marks and so on. So let's get started straight away with question number one. Now, question number one here is about momentum and impulse. You have a particle A, which has a mass of four kilograms, and a particle B, which has a mass of two kilograms. The particles move towards each other in opposite directions along the same straight line on a smooth horizontal table, and they collide directly. Immediately before the collision, the speed of A is 2 U meters per second, and the speed of B is 3 U meters per second. Immediately after the collision, the speed of B is 2 U meters per second. The direction of, of motion of B is reversed by the collision. Find in terms of U the speed of A immediately after the collision. Okay, so what we have to do now is make a clear diagram first. So I'm going to draw a circle representing particle A and a circle representing particle B. Now there's nothing here to tell me to call this A and call this B. I could write them the other way around. It doesn't matter. In the end, my answer will be the same, whichever way I do it. Most people would write A here and B there. Let me just write the A outside the circle. So they would put particle A here and particle B here. That's how most people naturally would write it. But you could put A there and B there, and it, and it won't make any difference to the final answer. Now, they've told us that A has a mass of 4 kilograms, so 4 kilograms. So we know the unit for that as well. And then B has a mass of 2 kilograms. It says the particles move to, towards each other in opposite directions. So A is moving this way, and B is moving in this direction, according to our diagram. If we put A there and B there, then, you know, there'd be like, you know, a would be moving here and B would be moving there. All right, now, immediately before the collision, the speed of A is 2U two, two meters per second. So I'm going to put the information about before the collision on the top here above the two balls. So before, um, A is moving at 2U meters per second and B is moving at 3U meters per second. Of course, they're moving towards each other. So B will be moving this way and A will be moving that way if we draw A and B there. Okay, and then after the collision... So I'm going to put here after. They've told us that um, the speed of B is 2 U meters per second. So for B, they've told us it's, it's now uh, 2 U meters per second. And the direction of motion of B is reversed by the collision. So B is now moving at a speed of 2 U meters per second in the opposite direction to what it was moving before the collision. So in according to our diagram, B is now going to be moving towards the right, according to our diagram here, at a speed of 2 U meters per second. Um, it says here, find in terms of U the speed of A immediately after the collision. Okay, so we don't know which way A is going after the collision. Okay, I'm going to call this speed VA. Okay, we don't know if it's going to go that way, that way, until we've done our calculations. And we've got to find the speed of this collision. All right, now, so let's go ahead and do the calculation. Now, we know that by the conservation of linear momentum, okay, the total momentum before the collision and the total momentum after the collision will be exactly the same. So the mass times the uh, velocity, has to be velocity, before the collision, the total of A and B will be equal to the mass times the velocity in total after the collision for these two. Um, that, so that's one way of calculating the speed of A after the collision. So if we consider before the collision, let's consider before the collision, what we'll have here is the mass of A times its speed. Now what we're going to decide now is which direction we're going to call positive. Now I'm going to call, according to our diagram, the right positive. Okay, that's I can call the left positive if I want. In the end, the answer will be the right answer. But before the collision, A is moving in the direction that we have defined 
as positive in our diagram. So I'm going to take the mass of A times its speed, its velocity, sorry, it has to be velocity, which the direction matters. And for B, its mass, which is 2 times its speed, which is now going in the opposite, its velocity, sorry, not its speed, its velocity, which is now going in the opposite direction to what we call positive. So we're going to put this as negative 3u. It's very, very important that you understand this. The signs are very important here. And that's equal to the total momentum after the collision because linear momentum has been conserved, the conservation of linear momentum. So after the collision, we don't know what the speed of A is. We don't know what the velocity of A is. So we're going to have four times VA. That's what we're going to call it. And we know after the collision, B is now moving in the direction we have defined as positive with a speed of 2U. So it's going to be 2 times 2U. Right, so the only unknown here is VA. U is something that we have to find the answer in terms of. So U is going to be in our answer anyway. So we need to find what VA is. So what we can do is we can multiply these together. That's going to give you um, 8U minus 6U is equal to 4VA plus 4U. So now that's going to be 2U equals 4VA plus 4U. We're going to subtract 4u from both sides. We end up with minus 2u equals 4va. Therefore, we can say va is equal to minus 2 over 4u. So va is equal to negative a half u. Now, the, that's in meters per second. Now, the question is asking us for the speed of a, not its velocity. Okay, so for sure, we don't write the sign. We put speed equals a half u meters per second. Now, if the question had asked us about the velocity, we still don't put the negative sign. We have to talk about the direction of motion, in which direction it's moving, and we talk about it not, we don't say to the right, we don't say to the left, okay? We talk about its direction. Now, we can see here that VA, according to our signs that we placed here, is going to be moving in the opposite direction to what it was first. So it's moving with its direction reverse. It started off going in this direction and afterwards that's positive direction according to us and afterwards it's a negative direction. Therefore, its direction has been reversed. And that's what P part B is asking for. Part A is asking for the speed. So we don't mention any sign. We don't mention any direction in part A. We just give the magnitude of that velocity because speed is a scalar quantity and the speed is equal to the magnitude of the velocity. So that's very important for us to understand. And secondly, uh, what we have to also understand is part B is asking us for the direction of motion of A immediately after collision. So what you don't do and what many students actually do is they will write down the you know, description that is going towards the left here. Because they say, oh, the right is positive, it's going towards the left. But if we had drawn A over there and B over there, then it would be going to the right. So, you know, they didn't tell you to draw A here and B there. So you don't write right or left in these type of questions. You talk about, compare it to its initial motion. So you can say that A was moving to the right, now it's moving to, to, its, to the left. So we can use this same notation, the same phrase here. The direction of A is, re is reversed. Okay, so you can say its direction is reversed okay all right as compared to before the collision something like that but just saying its direction is reversed is fine to before the collision okay so that's what they're looking for that it's going in the opposite direction to what it was before its, its direction has been reversed they're looking for something like that don't say right or left say its direction has been reversed and for the speed put the units down all right, because they gave us units in the question, okay? And also, don't put negative. Its speed is a scalar quantity. You don't write negative, nor do you say the speed is a half few meters per second in this direction. No need to write the direction when they're asking for speed. If they said velocity, yes, you say the velocity has a magnitude of a half few meters per second in the opposite direction to what it was moving before. If that's the question asked about the velocity, you have to mention that. Don't put the sign of minus. You do that in your working, but in your final answer, you write it as 
a half few meters per second. And if they had said velocity in their direction, in the opposite direction to what it was moving before the collision. That's really important. Okay, now for part C, it says find in terms of U the magnitude of the impulse received by B in the collision. State the units of your answer. So the impulse which caused B to change its direction, okay, of course acts in the direction opposite to the way that B was moving before the collision. It changed its direction. So B changed direction. So the impulse is acting in the direction that is opposite to that direction it was moving in in the first place. Okay, so it sometimes an object is slowed down or reverses its direction okay, by the impulse which acts in the opposite direction. So that's something we have to understand. Very important. Okay, now... So the impulse received by B is acting in this direction. Now, the impulse is equal to the um, change in momentum of an object. So the momentum before the collision minus the momentum after the collision is the impulse. So the impulse we've received by B is going to be the mass of B times its final velocity take away its initial velocity. That will be the impulse received by B, okay? And impulse has a direction. So the question could come out as positive or negative, the answer, depending. In this case, it's going to be positive, of course, because the impulse is acting in the direction that we have defined as positive. But even if it come out as negative, we don't write the negative sign here because the question says, find the magnitude of the impulse. All right, so we we'll always keep it as positive. And if they say find the impulse, then we would also have to mention its direction. In this case, we don't have to because it's asking for the magnitude. So we know the mass of B is 2 kilograms. We know the initial velocity of B is negative 3 U meters per second because we've defined this direction as positive. Initially, it was moving in the opposite direction. So we have to put the negative 3 U meters per second and the final velocity of b is with this uh, direction change so now it's going in our positive direction 2u meters per second so there's going to be 2u meters per second positive okay so now we can say the impulse that's received by b is equal to 2 times we have v b minus bu so the final velocity which is 2 minus the initial velocity which is negative 3u be careful about the signs there. So you're going to have the impulse received by B is going to be 2 times, that's going to be 2U plus 3, which is 5U, which gives you 10U, and we have to put the units. Now, impulse is mass times velocity, so you could write it as kil kilograms, meters per second, and we know also impulse is force times time, so we could also write this as uh, Newton seconds. Those are both units for impulse. But we should write the units here because they gave us units in the question. So it's very important for us to write the units. Okay, one mark in this question is for writing the units. And this particular paper had a, um, to get an A, you had to get something like 67 out of 75. So losing a mark for the units is a bit sad if you're going to miss out on a, a, you know, a grade because of just that unit. All right, so just make sure you, you write the units down, especially when they give you the units, you should write the units down in the answer. Okay, so we're not going to write, you know, if, even if the answer came out as negative, supposing we took the left as positive here, or we drew B over there and A over here, our answer would have come out as negative 10, 10 kilo, uh, kilo, uh, kilograms per meter per second squared, or Newton seconds. But we write it as positive. Why? Because the question says magnitude of the impulse. And even if it came out negative, we don't still write negative. We talk about the direction. Okay, so if the question said find the impulse received by B, uh, you would have to mention the direction. And we'll say, you know, in a direction opposite to the initial, you know, um, velocity of B. Or in the same direction as B moves after the collision. Something like that. Okay, so that's how we can answer part C, and that completes this question. Okay, however, I just want to point out something else, that there is an alternative way to answer part A, which they don't intend in this question because 
of the way that they've ordered the question. But it is possible for you to answer part A by first of all doing exactly what we did. We calculated the impulse received receive by B, which you can do because you know the situation of B before and after the collision. So we could actually use the fact that the impulse received by A, after we've worked out this exactly, the impulse received by A is going to be acting in the opposite direction, which changes the motion of A, okay? And its magnitude will be the same as the impulse received by B. So if we can calculate the impulse received by B, which we can because we know all the information before and after the collision, then the impulse received by A must be the same. So it's going to be minus 10 Newton, 10 U, sorry, Newton seconds. Did I put the U there? Yes, I did. 10 U Newton seconds or kilograms meters per second, whichever on your whatever you want to write. Okay, so we know that for A, the impulse, which is minus 10 U, is equal to its mass, which is 4, times its final velocity, which we're trying to find because I imagine we didn't do it this method. We had found the impulse received by um, B first. So the final velocity of A, we don't know right, what it is right now. Okay, but the, the initial velocity of A is 2 U in our positive direction okay so we end up here with um, minus 10 u is equal to 4 times va minus 8 u okay and if you um, add um, minus 8 u yeah if we add 8 u to both sides okay we have minus 10 u plus 8 u equals 4 times VA and that gives me minus 2U equals VA so VA is going to be minus 2U over um, f minus sorry over 4 4 let me just do that part again sorry running out of space here let me just get rid of this for a second and draw this somewhere else okay that's our positive direction so we have sorry minus 2U equals 4 VA so minus 2u over 4 equals va. So va equals minus a half u meters per second. So that's the same answer, but we write the answer therefore as speed equals a half u meters per second. We don't put the sign. Okay, so you can get the same answer exactly by finding the impulse received by b first and then saying that the impulse received by a must be the same but in the opposite direction. So the opposite sign to what we got for b. And you can say that the mass, the impulse is equal to the mass times the change in velocity. So that's an alternative way to answer A. And sometimes actually you are forced to use this method. Okay. Um, because sometimes they tell you the impulse received by one of them. And they don't tell you enough information to use conservation of linear momentum. You have to use the impulse method. So you should understand how to do this for those cases where that can occur. Okay, but in this case, of course, the intention here is for you to use cons conservation linear momentum from the way they have ordered the question. However, if you did use, if you know, use this method, that would be perfectly fine. Um, and you would have answered part C first, basically. Okay, so there's the answer to question number one from the M1 June 2023 paper. If you would uh, like to find other questions um, from this particular paper, you can find them in the playlist which will appear in this section here. You can click that link. The link over here will take you to the playlist which I, in which I've collected all the questions about linear momentum, uh, momentum and impulse from M1, from um, at Excel, International A-Level. And other questions, and if you want to watch the a video, if you want to subscribe, that will be over there, sorry. If you want to subscribe to my channel, click on this link that will show here. If you want to watch a video that tells you how to find um, or navigate through my channel in a efficient manner, you can watch the video here. It tells you how to find what you need in my, in my channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.